Okay, so you get up, you go outside and you see Lee there. He's already there and he's got a package in the back seat. How long was that package? That package was roughly uh, two feet long, give or take an inch or two. All right, now we've got a brown paper bag in front of us. Let's measure out two feet. Let's see how long two feet would be. This, this bag is too wide. You say it's too wide, so we'll fold it in half once we get to the right measurement. Okay? Now this is something I think the Warren Commission should have done with you. Is that two feet down there? Uh, this is two feet right here. Okay. Here we are. You fold the bag, please, at two feet. Okay, fold the bag at two feet. Now I said two feet, give or take an inch. Oh, I understand. And, you know, we know after 51 years, give or take an inch, you know, that's fair play. Right. Okay, so the bag was about this long. Yeah. The bag was also about half the width. I see. You see where this is here? I suppose that's where this, where the paper right here. Okay. Like that? You, you say that's about the size? Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty close right there. Like that, right there. That, right that. That's about what you saw in the back seat of your car? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how did Lee carry this when he walked in the school book depository? Would you stand up and show him? Yeah. He, uh, he carried it under his arm. Hip like this, and his hand was cupped under the bottle. Now, under the bottle, you can see that I had a little trouble here cupping that like that. Okay? We well, said give or take an inch. So if we take an inch, it could be an inch shorter. Could be, but it also could be an inch or two longer than two feet. Okay. So, but anyway, so he carried it just like this. He had it under his armpit and had his hand cupped underneath. Now, I'm taller than Lee, and my arms are probably a little longer than Lee. Now, when you walk to the school book depository, you stay back with the car for a few moments. Yes. He walked out ahead of you. Yes, he did. And when he walked out ahead of you, could you even see the package? No. Unless you knew it was there, you wouldn't know what to look for. You wouldn't even know he had a package in his hand. That is correct. Okay. And that package under your arm is about two feet. Yes. All right. Can I see that bag again? Now, the Warren Commission says that Oswald had a copy of this magazine, the American Rifleman magazine, from February of what year? 1963. 1963. And he turned to this page. Uh, this is page 65. Page 65. And out there, in the lower right hand corner, is a little cutout there, coupon, if you will, fill it out and send it away to Klein Sporting Goods in Chicago. Yes. And third from the top is what? From third from the top appears to be a uh, Italian uh, rifle used by the uh, military in uh, Italy. What's the name of the rifle? Is that a Mantlet or a Carcano? Uh, yes. All right. It also says the length of the rifle that Oswald supposedly sent away for. It says it's 36 inches 30, in length. 36 inches in length. So Oswald is purchasing a 36 inch length rifle. According to the Warren Commission. Yes. Right. Let's go back to our brown paper bag. Okay. Would you do for me what the Warren Commission should have asked you to do way back then and measure off 36 inches? Okay. I'll hold it down at this end, Buell. Okay. Okay, we got Mark 36. Okay. Now let's take that, hold it over at the 36 inch mark. Okay. okay. And okay. okay, put this in 
hand under your arm, please. Not bad. to the school book depository holding a brown paper bag that was 36 inches in length to hold a 36 inch rifle stood out all the way above your ear to your head. Yes. Top of your head. Is that what he carried? No. Okay. Can I see the brown paper bag one more time please? The Warren Commission Commission Exhibit number 139. This was Commission Exhibit number 142. Commission exhibit number 139 was the rifle that was carried out of the school book depository on November 22nd. Now this rifle here has a sling mounted on the bottom. The rifle that Oswald supposedly took his photograph with in the backyard on Neely Street had slings, the sling connected. attachments connected on the bottom. But the rifle that was brought out of the school book depository was 40.2 inches in length and had a sling connected on the side. Clearly not the same rifle. The rifle from the school book depository was never connected to Lee Harvey Oswald. That's why Lee Harvey Oswald could never go to trial. 40 inches. Would you measure out 40 inches in length for me, please? The length of the rifle from the school book depository. Hi there. Uh, so what we're looking at is an entire sort of representation of what Buell Frazier remembers seeing on the back seat of his car, a vehicle he's familiar with. He knows the seat length. I mean, these seats are all standard in vehicles. Um, what I've done is I've actually taken a uh, couple bags, uh, tape them up together to be of a sort of more or less an approximate length, uh, approximate width uh, from what he's describing in the other video. Uh, all credit to whoever's uh, video that is. It was a um, referenced video off YouTube uh, being used in fair uh, use here. So, sir, if you see this, uh, then I'm referencing your video. Uh, it's a good video. I'm glad you uh, uh, spoke with Mr. Frazier uh, about the bag. But, uh, I digress, and we let's get back on topic. Um, I created this bag, uh, approximate length, like I said, width, and I'm, what I'm doing is I'm going to lay it down on a uh, a bench, um, and I'm going to send it down to a, a friend of mine, um, so he can. Uh, he's offered. He's not. A, he doesn't agree with my theory, hundred uh, percent. He thinks there's a lot of interesting factors in what I'm proposing. Um, and we'll get to that in a second. But um, what I'm going to do is he's going to put his some of the weapons that he has in his collection uh, down atop this bag. Uh, whereas where I live, I have a 6.5 Carcano. I'm going to more or less do the same thing uh, here. Um, but he's got access to multiple firearms in his collection. And he's, like I said, offered to, uh, to take a look uh, on, on behalf of... Uh, uh, research uh, with this group and whatnot. So again, my theory specifically says that um, you had Mr. Uh, Frazier drive Oswald. Uh, Oswald had at least uh, one AR carbine style firearm um, in his vehicle. Um, it was already put in the trunk or in the back or whatever. Um, and then uh, Frazier sees that second one. Now I can't 100% proof. There's no reason they would have uh, had to if there are multiple shooters. It, it's sort of irrelevant. But the point is, is that what we know is there was at least uh, one carbine length uh, firearm. Um, and again, uh, this is an opportunity for everyone to pause this video and look up uh, the GX5857. Uh, that's most similar today to um, what the U.S. defines as a uh, SBR or AR pistol. Uh, that's more in the 10-inch length category. So Oswald puts it in the vehicle before Frazier comes out from his parents' house. His, his mom 
was making breakfast for him. He takes Oswald to to, uh, to work. Uh, they arrive. Oswald takes off to the building. Oswald hands off his uh, bag to uh, one of the floor workers. Now, remember, the floor workers had control of the upper floors for at least several days to two weeks prior. And uh, they're going to give him a menial task to, to do, uh, to complete uh, during the course of their operation. Uh, they mock up the sixth floor high to make it appear as though there's this obvious sniper's hide there. Uh, Jarman, James Jarman, uh, Bonnie Ray Williams, and uh, Harold Norman are going to be on the fifth floor. During the course of the motorcade approaching, James Jarman is going to move from his window, as he describes in the testimony, and place himself over behind uh, Harold Norman, or by Harold Norman. I say specifically behind because when you watch Exhibit 3 of the um, FBI recreation and they're looking up at the building, you'll notice that there's a clear line of sight uh, to that, uh, that position. Now remember... Jarman, Norman, and Williams are underneath the sixth floor. They're underneath where Oswald supposedly took his shots. So, again, why is that significant? Well, that motorcade's going to move. James Jarman's going to go to that corner. He's behind uh, Norman. He's behind cover, uh, rather concealment. He's going to pick up his carbine, and he's going to proceed to put some shots down to um, echo back the sounds that are coming from a most likely subsonic capability, from across the plaza. That is going to be bolstered uh, by the acoustic report uh, as a result of the moderator that he's going to be using from the fifth floor again um, on his, uh, his AR carbine, which is going to give the sound effect as being of a larger caliber. For the military, they added this muzzle device to it. And that muzzle device, technically speaking, reduces the decibel level of the report by a little bit, which is why ATF has ruled that those are actually legally silencers or suppressors. But that wasn't actually the purpose. The purpose of this was to make the gun not sound like an M16, and it does that pretty well. This actually sounds substantially more like an AK when it fires than an AR or an M16. And so that was a, a, a substantially important thing for Special Forces guys behind the lines. You, if you had to start shooting, better that it sounds like a friendly gun than it sounds like an enemy American gun back there. So that was the purpose for this. That's going to give credence to the uh, muzzle effects uh, on the floor, muzzle effects uh, as um, produced uh, on uh, William's hair. He's got all this dust and debris on his head. Oh, well, that's probably because uh, you got Jarman firing through that second window and he's standing back from the window. Uh, You can look up any video on YouTube and see that muzzle effects are a very real thing in uh, closed environments. On the other side of the plaza, uh, you're going to have most likely uh, Shields, Norman, I'm sorry, uh, Shields, Givens, and uh, James Tracy, who they, of course, met up at Record and Elm, uh, although there is, as far as I can tell, nobody that can substantiate Uh, their alibis that they were together. Well, they're going to go get a truck that's going to have staged from the the Texas School Book Depository warehouse, and they're going to drive up to Commerce Street. Now, when you watch the Zapruder film, as Zapruder pans toward that south knoll, you can look up, freeze frame, and you'll notice there is a box truck there. Now, we're going to quickly jump around here because I don't want to get too much on on this theory because that's not what the video is for. Um, When you look at Google Maps, that camera is about a nine foot camera, eight and a half feet. That box truck is going to be give or take about 12 feet tall. So that's a good approximate uh, firing position, firing solution for anyone in that vehicle who's going to be engaging at about 100 yards, 100, 100 and what, 120 130 yards. Uh, that, that's in the realm of a subsonic capability. They're starting to get in that area, um, effective that is. Um, so they're going to make those shots from that, that area. Uh, what evidence is there to, and again, I'm not going to go way off on topic on this. You've got some sort of effect that occurs on the glass as, uh, again, through the Zapruder film, 
Um, you also got the Al, Al Jens video, uh, I'm sorry, photography, which shows that an aberration of an effect occurs in the glass, and there, were, there is, in fact, testimony alluding to something having happened there. Okay, you've got weird effects on JFK in the back. You've got Connolly getting hit. You've got some frontal wounds and issues that, that, are, um, that are present that don't make sense with the story uh, that the public is uh, pretty much entertained with. So anyway, back to the topic at hand. Okay, for this first uh, clip here, uh, what I did is I uh, pretty much did an overview and then did, um, doing this recording later uh, after the fact. I'm going to have to, um, well, I might put some video together to, depending. I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to even take, take this thing apart at some point. But the point is that you can see the outline of this over the, uh, over the bag, uh, this is a 6.5 Carcano um, rifle for all intents and purposes. It is the uh, same exact weapon that Oswald used, um, allegedly, um, aside the fact that there's no scope um, on the frame. Um, so what I'm going to do here is uh, I flip it over, and you can see from the receiver up to where the barrel uh, meets up with the receiver, uh, that this can be separated, uh, from the stock. So for argument's sake, I actually line the, um, metal part of the weapon, the, the, um, the receiver and barrel together, and I drag it over to the side of the bag, and you can see that there's still a discrepancy in size. So again, presumably, you have these attachment points where the stock can meet up with the actual receiver and barrel. You take these things off, which I guess they're alluding that Oswald must have done, um, despite the fact that there were no tools accessible to him or found in the sniper's hide or on his person. Uh, maybe he tossed that when he allegedly threw the weapon by the stairwell. Well, there was no reason for him to have done that. Um, but you can see that these don't fit. Okay, so uh, ran out of video there. Okay, got my video back from my buddy uh, down in the south, and I'm going to have to splice all this audio and video together. I just sat down talking with a couple of you guys on, on Facebook at the moment. But there's the, the bag. Uh, again, I spliced that at the beginning um, with uh, the, the bag that I, I showed underneath the Carcano. Sent it out. To my buddy, he sent it back, but there it is, a size comparison uh, on his his workbench uh, at his place. Uh, he's got a couple firearms he's compared here for us. Um, first one we've got to look at is a standard uh, AR-15, 16-inch uh, barrel, nothing special about that. The stock's in a collapsed position, but you can see while it's sitting on the bag, it's still too long uh, for uh, the... Um, Store, being stored in a bag, according to what uh, Buell Frazier speculates, is the size of the, the uh, uh, bag for storage. Now, to note, those two takedown pins on an AR lower, AR upper, you could arguably remove the upper and uh, kind of put those things together, and not quite half the size of each, uh, but the lower in the stock, and then the upper with the handguard and the barrel, you could kind of mash those together on top of one another. Um, in this next clip, uh, my buddy put a, a AR-10, that's a 308 caliber uh, battle rifle, uh, down on the, the bag. As you can see, that's just completely absurd. Now, this is most similar to your 7.62-51, pretty much the same caliber for all um, intents and, and purposes. Uh, your, your FALs, your G3s, uh, same kind of, you know, battle rifle style. Um, a quick history, AR-10 was the first Armalite model ever created before the AR-15 and M16, uh, the stoner models. Um, the GX-5857 was before that. Uh, the AR-10 was the original um, design that was brought up to more or less battle up against the, uh, the M14, but we're not going to get into the history of it, just size comparison. Here's a uh, PSL uh, slash Dragunov slash... Um, you know, 7.62 by 54R um, sniper rifle, basically. Uh, as you can see, completely absurd. 
uh, size comparison. Uh, if you were to pull that stock off, maybe, uh, you know, so do something with that handguard partially. Um, you can make that somehow work. Um, but that's, that's not, that's not a thing, uh, for, <laughs> for to be re realistic, uh, with, with that bag. Now this last, uh, uh, segment here, we've got this right here, folks, is an AR pistol. Now in America, th this is not an SBR. SBR stands for short barreled rifle. This is a pistol. I asked my, my buddy to specifically show the, the, um, the pistol brace. Uh, on, on his pistol that there were that way there were no questions uh, this thing is the perfect size for this bag notably the dimensions I took from the video with Frazier have little to do uh, with this AR pistol okay I, I took it from Frazier's video that description I made the bag I sent it down look how close that matches up with the size of the uh, GX5857 which I showcased earlier in the video uh, and how similar that would be to be utilized in that fashion so again uh, Frazier's bag the overall scene uh, what does it seem to indicate overall it indicates you had if there was a conspiracy you you had controlled floors the fifth floor the sixth floor uh, which were um, used to prime uh, to to, to frame Oswald, they they mocked up that scene on the sixth floor for the sniper's hide. Uh, Jarman Norman uh, Williams, you had uh, Edwin Do Doherty. Uh, his testimony is completely absurd. It's laughable. Um, you had several floor layers who left the building after racing down the elevators, which were later disabled for whatever reason. Uh, you had Truly run into the building first in an active shooter situation. Uh, head of Officer Baker, who was the first officer in the building on scene. Uh, officer Baker sees Oswald on the second floor, uh, pretty much asks Truly, who's already at the stairwell, hey, who is this guy? Truly returns. That's absurd. It's an active shooter situation. Why is a business owner or a, um, a worker, an employee in a building, going to run into the active shooter situation to say, I know where the guy is. Let's go up there. Nobody's going to do that. That's not normal. Okay, but again, going back, uh, Givens and Shields, they leave. They go meet with uh, uh, James Tracy again up there at Record and Elm. They proceed to come around to Commerce in a box truck, which was staged from the 1917 North Houston Warehouse, which was, ironically enough, later destroyed to make way for that new highway uh, that bisects uh, the city of Dallas. So, you know, you have all those things happen. Uh, lo and be lo and behold, you know J JFK is is shot and killed, and uh, we all enter the Vietnam War. So again, I don't want to get way off topic on all this. Uh, the main context here was to showcase a comparison of Fraser's bag uh, directly to a real Carcano, and to show the um, you know feasibility for that to have occurred the way that they say it did. Now, unless again going back to uh, Fra Fraser's bag, Fraser's description was that the bag could, in fact, have been a little bit longer or shorter. Okay, let's be at devil's advocate there. If Oswald was to take apart the Carcano action, you know, which we're looking at here again, I'm replaying the same video, uh, that Carcano action, that stock is still too long. It's too long by several inches, which goes beyond uh, the description that Fra Frazier gives. Um, in fact, you know, to, to really, uh, you know, take it apart and put it back together, it's not a pain in the ass, but it's, it's not easy to do. It's not fun. You don't, you're not going to do that to, to, you know, mock up a bunch of boxes and then get over there with your, 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 your bag, uh, you know, what he usually brought was his bag lunch. You're not going to bring a bag Carcano and then put this thing back, you know, together. And then again, Oswald's got a, you know, 22 long rifle scope, which is broken on top of the rifle. I mean, the entire scene from the perspective of, of a shooter on the sixth floor is just, uh, it, 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 it's so dumb, it hurts to think about. I, I, I you know, maybe I'm just a young guy in, in this, uh, um, you know, JFK research community, but it seems very clear that there's a lot of malfeasance going on there. Um, so, again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, you know, Hopefully, uh, the research and the asking of questions continues. 
I would love to be able to challenge my my theory and find a alternative perspective uh, to show it either to be uh, without merit or, or false or to show another uh, perspective that might be uh, more accurate. Uh, I've been researching this since 2018. Uh, I desire no money, uh, only truth and honesty uh, through uh, what happened since my in- interest uh, has uh, only grown in the subject. Um, you know, don't want anyone to steal the uh, the idea to make like a movie or something, uh, you know, or anything along those lines. Uh, please go to my website, securedeterrent.com, uh, for other thoughts or uh, theories. All right, guys. Thank you.